Gemini horoscope for January 2020. Happy New Year, dear friends, and welcome to the first monthly horoscope for 2020. We begin the year with so many karmic life-changing events. The biggest one is the conjunction between Saturn and Pluto, one of the main topics we have of the year, something that can really change your life and you have to be prepared and know what you should do about it. The other key event is the lunar eclipse in Cancer Capricorn, kind of triggering the same areas like the Pluto-Saturn conjunction. We also have the Sun with Saturn and Pluto. We have a new moon in Aquarius. And those are just the key events, but there are many others. And in this video, I will walk you through each of them so that you can start 2020 in the most amazing way. Before that, I want to share with you two special gifts I have for you for 2020. The first one is the January 2020 calendar, which you can download completely free as a PDF version and also Google integration, which I'm so proud of that we are able to present to you. And the other surprise is the special program, Eclipse's Journey 2020, which I have created for you. We begin on the 1st of January and you can join us for free for the first three days. This is a program which will help you to reprogram your subconscious mind so that you have the most amazing 2020. All of that you will find in the description below. And let us begin with the first astrology event for 2020. On the 2nd of January, there is a conjunction between Mercury and Jupiter in your eighth house. And you will notice that there will be many other events that will also trigger your eighth house basically through the whole January. Even the sun is there in the beginning of January. So the major theme of the month for you guys is transformation. It's a serious house. It can bring some kind of serious transformations, but it can also allow you to heal, especially on an emotional level. And with this first aspect between Mercury and Jupiter, you might be able to find some solutions. Your intuition can guide you for research, this is a great aspect. For learning something in the occult area, the esoteric area, this is also great. Mercury and Jupiter are both related to information and knowledge. And this combination allows you to plan things, to see the bigger picture. Eighth house is also related to your resources, actually the mutual resources and money and also investments. So it could be a great time to plan how you can invest your money, how you can improve the area of mutual resources and finances in your life. After that, on the 7th of January, there is a very positive aspect between the sun in your eighth house and Neptune in your 10th house. This is a very inspirational aspect that can increase your creativity, can make you more inspired to do something new related to your business, your career, and money, investments, and resources. Maybe find the needed resources to start your business or someone who can help you to achieve what you want in your work. It's inspirational, it's very creative, and it can come easily to you. And it's very interesting that on the very next day, on the 8th, the same two houses are triggered again, but this time Mercury is in your 8th house, having the sextile with Neptune in 10th. This can bring new ideas related to the money, the business area, the financial stuff. You can apply it and turn it into something visible for others. You may also be inspired to help other people with your work or by using your impact. And literally, creativity, creativity for business, for new things that you can do. And 
contact with other people who can help you at work. All of that, this aspect can bring to you. Then we begin with the really serious stuff. On the 10th of January, one of the most important days for the whole year, we have a lunar eclipse in your second and eighth house. Second and eighth house, the axis related to all of your resources, your money, your personal belongings, your energy and the exchange. Do you allow the energy to flow? Do you let go the old stuff so that you will allow the new stuff to come? These are very important questions that the lunar eclipse will bring. Allow yourself to separate with things that you don't need. And the moon is actually in conjunction with the north node in your second house. So you can gain something material in the financial area. There might be serious transformations. And it's amazing. It can really be amazing. Even when it comes to your energy, your body, your health, you can make changes in your habits, in your diet, and eventually it can transform your whole life. It's interesting that Mercury is also part of the lunar eclipse by having a conjunction with the sun in your eighth house. There might be lots of thinking, planning, analyzing of the situation. You may have access to a different level, like an inspiration, something that comes from within. It could be a memory which can come up to the surface or an idea that might be very transformational, very deep, and all of that happening, we also have Uranus turning direct. Uranus will be in your 12th house, and it also means that Uranus is stationary on the 10th. That can bring some kind of surprises, something unexpected, and 12th house is a secret area. It's the subconscious, it's the past. So something might come up, something unexpected might pop up into your mind from the past surprisingly unexpectedly you may decide to change it or to let it go or to heal it so unexpected surprises might come up on the tent then on the 12th of january we have the next major big incredible combination saturn and pluto they will be in conjunction in capricorn in your eighth house and this aspect this type of aspect happens, well, very rarely. The last time it happened was around 1982, 83. So obviously it's a big deal. And this is time to transform something about your rules, about the structures you have created in your life, the rules and the principles you follow. All of that can have a dramatic impact on your financial stuff, on in the related to the area of resources, mutual resources as well. It's time to take back your power. It's time to be very serious. It's time to be very disciplined. And Pluto is a planet that can increase your willpower. Your willpower to create new type of rules, to follow some new principles, to structure something in a new way. So it's incredibly empowering and transformative. It might bring some kind of serious topic on the surface, letting go, allowing something to die, transforming something, facing with something critical. Eighth house can bring those type of experiences. But Mercury is there as well. And you have to use your mind as your guide. You have to be practical to find solutions, to have new ideas and to apply them. Again, I repeat, the major area which is triggered is resources, transformation. It could be also time to think about serious stuff like that like letting go of things, allowing things to, you know, leave your life. 
And on the positive side, this is also great for spiritual practices, which require a very serious disciplined attitude, maybe some restrictions. This would be the best way actually to handle with challenges. Be very strict about your yoga practices or your exercises. Find the diet that will allow you to improve your health. Even if you don't need or want to lose weight, just do it so you channel this energy in an easier way, in a more positive, constructive way. It can really help. After that, on the 13th of January, Again, Saturn and Pluto are triggered, but this time by the Sun, which will make conjunction with the two planets at the same time. Of course, again, eight houses triggered, so it's kind of the same topic. To be empowered, to feel really strong and passionate, more decisiveness, but also discipline, structure, maybe letting go of the fears, taking your power back to transform your life, to handle with critical situations, to be strong and in alignment, connected to your own energy and changing the things that you don't like in your life. That's the best you can do. Also on the same day, Venus is moving to your 10th house in Pisces, which is a very positive position bringing more harmony and balance to your work, to your business, allowing you to feel more, more in touch with emotionally with what's going on at work, to put more emotions there, and also to harmonize the relationship with authority figures, with business partners or other people related to your business. After that, on the 15th, Venus in your 10th house is having a positive aspect with Uranus in 12th house. Positive emotional surprises related to your work, coming out of the blue unexpectedly. 12th house is very secret, so you don't know about it, but it surprises you in a positive way. It could be a nice gesture from another person at your work or just a new opportunity to do something you love related to your work. It's all great. And on the 16th of January, Mercury is transitioning into your ninth house, which can bring some relaxation. One planet which leaves your eighth house, so less planets in eighth house. It's easier, honestly. And this may allow you to focus more on the future some planning, some visualizing, great time for traveling or communicating with foreigners, people who are far away from you, and just planning more in a more detailed way the future projects you would like to materialize in your life. On the 18th of January, however, Mercury in ninth house is gonna have a challenging aspect with Uranus in your 12th house. And this can be very surprising. Some plans may need to be changed. Something about your goals may not work as you have imagined. And it could be again out of the blue with Uranus in 12th house. So make sure to be ready to make the changes to respond. It could also be a personal decision you suddenly decide, I don't want to pursue this goal anymore. I need a change. That's okay, of course. If you are traveling abroad, also make sure to check everything related to documents, the schedule, the planning stuff. There might be something unexpected. And on the 20th of January, there is another event, another transition that can bring some relief. The sun moves from your eighth to your ninth house. And it's a completely different picture. The sun in ninth house allows you to be more optimistic, more positive, focused on the future, inspired to pursue your goals. And it's time also to think about how you see yourself in the future, what you want to change, how you can change it. And 
to be, you know, to have a more philosophical attitude, to learn, to explore new things, to travel, all of the fun stuff that Night House brings. You will have the opportunity to enjoy them for a month. And on the 23rd of January, two major events. The Sun in Ninth House will have a square with Uranus in 12th house. Surprises on the horizon, unexpected things, but also opportunity for you to change your approach, to change your plans and your goals. It could be very unexpected, it can be very drastic, but it can also allow you to try some new things, to focus on new goals, and to get outside of you know, the ordinary path that you are following. Together with this aspect, there is a very positive one. Venus in your 10th house is having a positive aspect with Jupiter in your 8th house. The two benefactors are triggering the career house and the investment and financial house. Finding resources to invest in your business or finding support or receiving money from your business, all of that can be manifested. So make sure to dream, make sure to visualize the things you want. And you may also be able to do something that you would enjoy and will bring you success in the future, specifically related to the business and financial area. And on the 24th of January, there is a new moon in your ninth house, which is so positive. It's a great time to concentrate on the future, to set up some new goals, to think about your own desires and to be very specific what you want to change. It could be related to your education, to the knowledge you have, to traveling, visiting some new places, expanding your horizons, changing your beliefs as well. This new moon allows you to concentrate on all of that. And then on the 25th of January, Mercury in ninth house is having a positive aspect with Mars in your seventh house, allowing you to have new ideas and take action on them, plan something about the future, but also communicate with other people very actively to have productive negotiations, to be inspired by other people, have mutual goal with your partner. It's all Mars and Mercury in a positive connection. And on the 26th of January, there is one challenging aspect. Mars in your seventh house squares Venus in 10th house. And there can be some kind of emotional frustration. People can be more sensitive and you have to be especially careful at work, in your business and in your personal life and relationships. There might be a misalignment or confrontations with partners or confrontations at work or something about your desires that you may need to work harder to accomplish. It could be also related to some kind of business negotiations or the need to convince, to pursue something, um, to have some very dynamic negotiations. But overall, you know, there are too much emotions and um, sometimes too much competition between people around you. But after that, on the 27th of January, there is a very nice combination between Venus and Neptune. They will be in conjunction in your 10th house, allowing you to be more inspired, to be more creative, to have a more romantic, idealistic attitude at your business, at work, in your social projects. And this aspect may also help you to help other people actually with your work with your projects with how you connect to them you may really enjoy your work and the process and uh, let's see what else this aspect can bring you of course for people who work in creative areas art fashion industry beauty industry photography all of the neptune areas as well this aspect can be especially beneficial, bringing you 
success and opportunities, more inspiration, more creativity, and eventually, you know, better results. And finally, we have the last astrology event for January on the 28th. Mars in seventh house will square Neptune in your 10th house. You need to be extra careful at work and in the relationships. There might be secret competition between you and other people, something that other people are not telling you, something happening behind your back, or even lack of motivation, lack of clarity about what you want, what you should do, confusion, frustration. So my advice would be, not to rush yourself, not to push yourself to take too much action or be too active. Usually it's not productive. With Mars and Neptune in a square aspect, mm, it's more about relaxation. It's more about doing something creative. But again, make sure you have all the details. Everything is clarified. You communicate with other people in a very honest and direct way. Overall, I wouldn't recommend this day for important negotiations or business projects. And with that, actually, we covered the most important events during January 2020. Don't forget the two gifts I have for you, the January calendar and the three days enrollment for Eclipse's journey. This program was created specifically for you so that you can reprogram your subconscious mind. We are gonna use the EFT practices and some other techniques which can allow you to literally shift your subconscious mind. Something which can be amazingly productive during the eclipses corridor. So make sure to join us. Thank you so much for your time. It was a real pleasure for me and I'll see you soon.